guys, in front of us here is the entire set of Hypercube 3D printed parts. There are 41 pieces here printed in Urarum's silver PETG plastic. Each part was printed with three perimeters, three top and bottom layers, and a 40% infill. And I've got to say, uh, this, this silver colour that Ararum has, even though it's, it's quite a, like a dark silver, more like a gunmetal gun grey, I really like the finish on this material. It really pops with all the, uh, all the uh, pieces that I've printed with this particular PETG. So thumbs up to Ararum uh, for that. I've um, printed out a couple of these sets actually because I've had a few requests on YouTube uh, if, asking if I could you know, print out a set of these for them for a, for a fee and of course I obliged. But before I send this one off, I just wanted to show you what an entire set weighs and also how I go about printing the entire set of Hypercube parts. So here's my set of scales. This white box here is what I'll be shipping all the parts in. To, just to get a true representation of the weight of the parts, I'll tear out the box from the scales. All right, so that's now zero. I'll open the box, fill it up with all the parts. This one, there we go. Two hundred and twenty-six grams. For printing the Hypercube parts, I use Slicer. This is Slicer version one point two point nine A. I print the Hypercube parts in a group of four. That is, when I click Add, I have four parts of the Hypercube that I've already created. Let me open the first part and show you what I mean. Here we have approximately one quarter of the entire Hypercube set on the build platform right here. And I choose to split up the Hypercube into groups of four for a couple of reasons. One, because it only takes about four or five hours to complete each part. And two, if there's a problem with the print, so if there's a power outage or if you get a blocked nozzle or if the filament binds up, you're not gonna waste the full 200 grams of plastic trying to print something that you're not going to use. You're only going to, at worst, lose 50 grams of plastic, and especially for PETG, it's not the cheapest uh, filament on the market, so it's good to be able to, you know, hedge your bets and, and print four lots of about 50 to 60 grams. And of course, you're not going to fit the entire Hypercube set on a standard build platform. My 3D printer has a, a standard 200mm by 200mm build platform, and as you can see, this is a quarter of the parts, and it's already taking up about a third of the build platform. So you're going to have to split it up anyway if you want to print a group of these in one go. Now let me show you how I created this. Let me just highlight this. So I've clicked on it, I'll hit delete all, and I'll start adding the components one by one, uh, just like you would if you downloaded the Hypercube from Thingiverse. So to start off with, we'll start with adding the first item. This will be the bed support version 1.1 STL file. As you can see, it's placed it in the center of the build platform, but we know we need to print four of these. So let's right click on this part and click increase copies. We now have two. Right click again, increase, right click once more, Perfect, we now have our four copies of this bed support part. Click add again and let's choose the next option, Bowden drive mount. Click OK and as you can see it places it in the center and of course we can't leave it there, we've got to move it uh, away from the rest of the parts so I'll just move that down to about there. And let's choose another part, let's choose the E3D clamp. Again it places it in the center, I'll move that, oh I can fit it in there I think. Yeah, perfect, look at that, okay great. And we'll choose another part, E3D mount, that'll be the larger one. So this, this part's quite large, I'll move that to say over to here. So just by adding parts one by one, you can create your own three, four, five part set of Hypercube parts to print at any time that you need. Now, every time you need to print a Hypercube set just like this, you don't want to have to always add the parts like I'm doing now. You want to be able to save the parts and then reference them later. To do that is quite simple. On the right hand side we have this button here called export STL. 
click on that and it gives you the option to save these parts as a as an STL file so I'll save them in this directory and I'll call this uh, YouTube test one hit save and now this entire file is now uh, saved under that YouTube uh, test file so let me delete all these parts and add it again so I'll go into the directory and choose the YouTube test one STL and there it is it has reloaded the same parts and the same orientation that we saved earlier. Now it sees this as one part, they're no longer individual parts, so you can't reposition these individually. When I hover my mouse over these, you see all of them turn green. So now when I left click and hold down and I move one of the parts, they all move at the same time. And this can be quite handy, because that means you can have like a group of 10 or 15 smaller lots of parts and then add those smaller parts onto the build platform rather than adding one at a time. So this is a real, really easy way uh, that I position the Hypercube parts to get printing for the 3D printer. So now on to the actual print settings for using Slicer. Moving up to the top left, we'll choose the very first tab called Print Settings. Now I'm only going to go over the settings that I recommend you change to get really good parts out of your 3D printer. First up is the layers and perimeters. So this is the quality of the prints and I like to use 0.2 millimeters. 0.1 is an obviously a nicer quality but it just takes too long to print. 0.3 the quality is too coarse so 0.2 is a nice uh, in between for speed and quality of your prints. And I leave the, the, the first layer and the layer height the same at 0.2 millimeters. The number of perimeters, I choose three perimeters, so that's three shells, that's equivalent to uh, uh, 1.2 millimeters with a 0.4 millimeter layer height. The number of top and bottom layers, I set these both to three as well. And I also, also only have checked extra per perimeters if needed, and also detect bridging perimeters. Moving down to infill, the infill density you can choose here, I choose 40-50% infill, uh, everything else I keep as default. Skirt and brim, I change the minimum extrusion length up to 25 millimeters. This is just to ensure that there is actually plastic coming out of the nozzle by the time the parts actually print. So this prints like a ring around all the parts uh, of a length of at least 25 millimeters before it starts printing your parts. Next up we have speed. This is the actual speed of the prints itself and as I'm printing in PETG I'm kind of limited to print speed here so I'm printing at 50 millimeters a second. Uh, every other uh, print type here I'm printing at 50 millimeters a second as well except for small perimeters. For small perimeters I recommend reducing that to anywhere between 20 and 30 milliseconds as a really small perimeter needs to be printed more slowly so the detail comes out it isn't lost in the speed of the print. Also I have my travel speed set quite high 120 millimeters a second and for my first layer speed you want that quite slow because you want that first layer to stick to the in my case the blue painters tape I have that set to 30 millimeters a second. Next up we have advanced. This is quite important. I set my default extrusion width to 0.4 millimeters. So that's the same width as the nozzle on my E3D hot end. And I set that because for some reason uh, Slicer doesn't uh, join up the walls of the parts. There's like a small gap in between if you leave that set to automatic which is zero. So set that to 0.4 and that'll ensure the three perimeters so the walls of the part will be nicely lined up and butted up against each other. The next thing I do to save time when printing is to do with the infill and I actually double or not double I 1.5 times the width of the infill uh, to save time while printing. So I set the infill width to 0.6 millimeters which is equivalent to 150 percent and I do this so it prints uh, the, a less amount of lines but the lines being a bit thicker so that's a good trick. And lastly, I set the top solid infill to 130%. And I do this because, again, I, I find that Slicer doesn't produce a nice top layer. Setting it to 130% produces a nice smooth layer on the top of your 3D printed parts. Moving across to the next tab, we have filament settings. So this is where we set the diameter of your filament. I have mine at 1.75. And we also have temperatures. 
So for the extruder or your hot end, I'm printing PETG and the PETG I, I, I print with is 235 degrees Celsius. And for the, for the heated bed, I've set the heated bed to 70 degrees Celsius. And you can stipulate different temperatures for the first layer and also for other layers. Cooling, so this is the part cooling, so this is also quite important. I have the fan set full time to 50% with printing with PETG. I find I need to print with the fan, otherwise I start to lose detail in the part, especially when there's overhangs. But I disable the fan for the first three layers. This is to ensure that the part sticks down firmly to the blue painter's tape before the fan kicks in. I don't want to induce any warping into the plastic before it has, it has had, had a chance to adhere to the printed bed. I also set my minimum uh, print speed and slow down if layer print time is below five seconds. So if I'm printing small parts and it's gonna take less than five seconds for that layer, I slow it down to uh, at least 10 millimeters, uh, or it will scale down to at least 10 millimeters a second to produce a sharper uh, detailed print for those small parts. And lastly, we have the print settings tab. And what I change here is under the extruder uh, position on the left. This this is the retraction settings I'm talking about. So the length of my retractions are three millimeters, and the speed of the retractions I've got quite high, 150 millimeters a second. I also retract on layer change and wipe while retracting. And of course, this is where you set your nozzle diameter. I'm using the 3D version six with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Out of the entire Hypercube set, there are two items that need special attention to ensure they are printed correctly. And the first one we have in front of us here is the dual bushing holder. Now we're going to insert two bushings into this uh, dual bushing holder. So the internal diameter needs to be just right to ensure that the bushing isn't too loose, so it just falls out, or isn't too tight, so that we can't actually fit it inside here. So this is where we need to potentially adjust, and we're talking sub millimeter adjustments here, the size of the inner diameter of this particular dual bushing holder to ensure that your bushings fit inside this part, as every printer produces a slightly different variance uh, of the finished print. Now there's two ways we can do this. The first is we can scale this part. So to scale, we can right click on this part, choose scale uniformly. Now we have the option of a percentage here. So 100% is the standard size. But if the bushing that we have just falls through this, so, the, so we need to make this tighter, that means we need to make this smaller, we can reduce this down to say 99% and that'll reduce, you may have seen it, that'll reduce the size of this part by a tiny fraction, but that fraction could be just enough so the bushing fits in nice and snugly. Or alternatively, if your bushing is uh, a little bit too big or it won't, it just won't fit inside, well you go the other way, you uh, scale uh, larger. We want to make the uh, internal diameter here larger so we could go 101%. And you could see it just increased in size. Now there is a caveat here because the entire part scales. So that means that these mounting holes also scale. So there's a limitation to the amount of scaling that you can actually do before this part simply won't fit uh, onto the part it's supposed to mate with. So there's one other option we can do, and this might be the preferred option as it will keep this part of the correct uh, scale. So let's scale this back to 100. And that is up in filament settings. We can set under filament the extrusion multiplier. So by default, it's one. So it's going to extrude the correct amount of plastic based on the diameter of your filament that you're using. Now let's just say that you need to, to make that uh, uh, dual bushing smaller because the bushing is just falling straight through. So what you could do is you could you could over extrude. So we could say uh, 1.1. We're increasing the amount of plastic that we're going to use to make this part by 10%. It's going to be exactly the same size, but this extra plastic has to go somewhere. It means it's going to bulge out. This part's going to be thicker, and that will probably be enough to make the bushing nice and tight. Alternatively, if your bushing is too tight, then you need to under extrude. So we can do that by reducing it to say 0.9. 
Again, the part's going to be exactly the same size, it's just that the walls are going to be a little bit thinner, and that should hopefully allow your bushing to fit in nice and snugly. And the last part that requires special attention is the fan duct. The reason why this fan duct can be quite troublesome to print is because it is hollow. There is nothing inside. It's designed to let the air f f uh, flow from the top uh, through the nozzle to, to blow over the printed part. So this particular part has a quite a large bridge to it here and also up here. So we need to ensure that our bridge settings are appropriate to print this particular piece. Now to do that, up in print settings under speed, we have uh, this speed here called bridges, and I have that set to 50 millimeters a second. You need that to be at least, in, in my case, 50 millimeters a second to ensure that the print head's going to move nice and fast, and the plastic isn't just going to droop if it's um, if the print head is moving quite slow. The other thing that we need to ensure is the cooling. We want the bridges fan speed setting to go full blast, 100%. We want the plastic that comes out on that bridge move to go hard as soon as possible, so it doesn't just sag, it, it maintains its straight line. So we're cooling that plastic down and we're blasting it with 100% of air. Now I've tried to print this in Cura and unfortunately Cura doesn't see this particular part as a bridge. It just tries to print uh, over this particular hollow section like a normal uh, top or bottom surface and that just doesn't work. So uh, Slicer does a great job of identifying this as a as a bridge and, and uses those uh, bridge moves to print this particular part correctly. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're thinking about making a Hypercube 3D printer, please check out the Banggood links provided in the video description and on my Thingiverse page. Every purchase through those links provides a small commission which helps me produce these videos for you. And of course, please subscribe to be notified of my next video.